Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online, and today we've got a pretty awesome little miniature. I've always liked these. They're called Weird Vein Psychers, and they're from the Astra Militarum range. They're actually in the in the new indexes as Astra Telepathica. I can never seem to pronounce it correctly, but we're going to paint one of these. I'm using three of them, or Rachel's using three of these in her custodian army, and they're just the because they have no HQ choices. These will do suitably for her. So we're going to go over how I painted them. Okay, so to begin with, this model's been primed with Chaos Black, and then it's had a Zenith or Highlight of Corax White, so two spray can primers just to give us some pre-shading and some highlighting on those raised areas. We're using a lot of Scale 75 paints here, as well as some Games Workshop, but use whichever are the best for yourself, really. You don't have to go out and get Scale 75 or GW, just use the equivalent colours. So we're starting off with Deep Red. Now this is quite a deep red, which is what we wanted, and we're applying this over all of the robe areas and pretty much all the clothing on this model. It's one giant coat that is wearing, or cloak or cloak or whatever it is, and this needs to be built up in probably three or four thin coats. Especially I found with a scale 75 paint, you need to do much thinner consistency of paint because otherwise it does it gets quite clogged up in no time at all. So getting used to how much you need to thin the paint depending on which brand you're using is definitely something that's worth learning because I've only ever really used Games Workshop in the past so this is a completely new learning experience for myself. So you can see here it's still wet, it's uh, basically apply one full layer to an area and then let it dry completely before I do the second layer but generally because the paint is so thin as I'm working this upper area on this model the, the robes you can see are already dry so I can go back and do another layer on the robes afterwards and that's pretty much all you need to do it takes a bit of patience more than anything because it is quite boring just going around and laboriously just painting layers and layers and building it up but it's definitely better than doing quite a thick coat and um, later on there are times especially on the skin where I just I could have thinned it more and done more layers but I've, I've definitely put it on thicker just to speed up the process so once this is fully dried, we're going to shade all of this red using Karaberg Crimson. This is another Games Workshop paint. And you pretty much want to cover everything with this, but make sure you get it into all of the recesses. Do the wash in one go as well. You don't want to do part of the robe and then stop and then come back and do another bit, because otherwise you'll get nasty watermarks. So you can see I'm working the entire bottom half of his robes and then I'll do the back half of his robes and then I'll do the torso. But just make sure you do it in sections that are complete otherwise you'll get those watermarks the other thing with this you're going to need to wait probably at least 30 minutes to an hour i would say um, probably not an hour it depends on how hot it is in your area but at the moment in the uk it is pretty warm so these are pretty much drying within 30 minutes but just make sure it is dry before you do the next step which is going to be building it back up again okay so now that's fully dry we're going to use the original base color we're using deep red and we're going to go over all of the robe again, but this time we're going to leave some of those recesses with the Caribou Crimson. This does take a bit of time building it back up again, but it's definitely worth doing it in these thinner layers, which we did just before. One other thing to note is I'm painting in the direction that the robe is going down in, so I'm starting with my brush at the top of his robes and then dragging it down very gently towards the bottom. And I'm doing them in almost uh, straight lines not always straight sometimes I curve it around just to give it a little bit of texture and you can see I've messed up here so I'm just removing some of the paint because it is quite thin it is easy to remove if you get any mistakes at this stage as well which is another reason why it's worth putting all of your paint on as thin as you can and generally just going around the model here now just putting this extra layer of deep red on make sure you don't go into the recesses because you want that deeper caribou crimson to stay there and then once that's fully dr done and dried, we're going to go on to the next colour, which is going to be Antares Red, or Antares Red. Now, guess what we're going to do here? <laughs> exactly the same. We're going to do the next highlight. We're going to go over all of the robe, but this time focusing it more on the, the, the raised areas or where the light would hit the robe more than any other area. So I'm kind of going around the edges here, picking out some points where I think the direct sunlight would hit it. And that's pretty much the, the basis for it. The, the paint is thin, you can see it's drying very, very quickly. It's almost like a glaze at this point. And I'm just putting in some color, making it sure, uh, making the highlights a little bit brighter. 
Now, if you wanted to do more of a blend, that's where you would do wet blending on this, or you'd feather it into the uh, darker color. This is supposed to be a quicker paint job, so it is very, it's quite rough, but you can definitely see the highlights between the, the different shades in between the colors and the layers, but that's how I paint. I, I don't really do the very nice wet blending. One day I might do wet blending properly, but um, I've always tended to paint texture into my models. So you can see the brush strokes, you can see them when it's dry. And for me, I actually like that. So paint however suits yourself. But this is just more of a guideline on where to put the paint and what colors I've used, and hopefully they will work for you. The other thing with this is you could literally pick any shade, any color that you wanted. So if you wanted to do a blue or a green or a yellow robe, just pick three or four different shades for that color that you've chosen and follow the same sort of technique that I'm doing here. And you can build up where well, you can choose whatever you want. This is just an example of how it looks in red because this is what Rachel's having in her custodian army. It's a lot of gold and reds. Now again, once this is finally dry, we're going to go on to Alder, I'm going to call this Alder on Red, but it's Alder Baron Red. It's from Scale 75, it's another one, I'm trying these new paints out. This is pretty much the same as we did before, we're going to be going over all of the red that we've done just on the edges and the, the raised highlights where we want it to, to be the brightest, but you still want to leave some of the previous Antares red and you just want to do like the points of this and block in some more texture keep painting in the same direction as you have been doing for the rest of the model so that it doesn't look weird. If you suddenly start going horizontally and things, it won't really look correct. So just kind of follow the same as what you've done in the past. And you can see the different transitions in color here. We're gonna brighten this up with some oranges and some yellows, um, and then we're gonna glaze it with a red as well. And, and that will just give it the vibrancy that we want right at the end and you can stop at any of these points if you decide that two reds and, and an orange is enough just do that you don't need to put as many layers as this or you could do twice as many go for whichever one you prefer so you can see this is this color is really blocking in some of those lines the edges of the robes some of these areas don't even have textures on the model but i'm just putting them on just to make them a little bit more defined and that helps give it a little bit of texture Once this dries as well, the tone goes down a little bit, and then we're going to add a glaze later on, which is going to be the blood letter glaze from Games Workshop. So some of these harsh transitions will blend a little bit better, and that's why we're going to be using oranges and yellows, because once we've blended them with the, the glaze, they won't be as stark as they are right now. Just as a final bit for this highlighting, I'm using the edge of the brush and going along the bottom of the robes. You can see I'm just dragging a line across there to do a final highlight on the bottom of the robe. So that's pretty much that stage done and we're going to go on to the orange now. This is quite a bright contrasting colour so you'll immediately see that it's, it's much higher than the other colours, the other reds that we've used. This is Mars Orange by Scale 75, quite another vibrant colour by themselves. And that's one thing I've noticed with these colours so far, they've got a lot of pigment in them and you can thin them down quite a bit and they still are quite vibrant which is a nice thing to work with. So this one we are pretty much doing an edge highlight on this, we're going around the bottom of the robe, around the folds in the robes and any of the lines that we want to define we'll do a very thin um, brush stroke of that. It looks really really nice. You might want to skip this step, it's completely up to you whether you want it to be quite a high contrast. I definitely prefer it when I'm painting, but I know not everybody does. You can see we're just painting in some of these lines here. And we're just going in the same direction as, as the robes are, like we have been doing from the beginning. And you'll probably want to paint these in batches as well. So this was painted with the other two, which are in the box. So there was three of these done in one go. And that's so that all of these stages of red are done at the same time. Because if you start one model and then later on you decide to do another one, you might not get the colours exactly the same or you might do it a different process. If you're not following videos like this and you don't have it written down, it is always difficult to try and remember what paints you've used and what the process was. So this is quite handy for me doing these videos just so I can go back and see exactly what I did and then I can replicate it on models in the future. So these videos are both for you as a viewer and for myself as reference. We're also going to do the bottom of the robe with its orange as well. Just do a very fine edge highlight using the side of the brush. 
and I would always say don't ever try and paint with the point. If you can help it use the edge because you can see how much of a, a nicer line you get by using this and it's a lot easier. Okay the bottom half of the robe has now started to dry so you can see the orange is looking quite nice with that red. You can definitely see the texture in it and um, to be honest you don't necessarily need to do any sort of yellow highlighting after this you could keep it with this orange and red and it would look absolutely fine the next part that I do uh, we're going to do a little wash a little focused wash but when we put the yellow on that's been done because the custodians that this arm this is going with have had a little bit of yellow added to their tassels so I've done the yellow to tie in with the rest of the army so just to add a little bit of contrast just to darken some of these recesses we're going to use Druchi Violet and we're just almost like a pin wash we're just going to use the same small layer brush that we've had from the beginning and we're just going to paint this Druchi Violet into these recesses just to shade them we're not using a red because we're going to use that later on but this is just to give it a little bit of a tonal change and it is only a subtle change as well the rest of this model is going to have gold um, added to it and we're going to use purple as the wash for the gold at different points so that's why we're using the purple on the red as well just to tie in so that overall the model looks very similar and this is still quite thin you can see it drying already some areas you might want to put a, a couple of coats others you might just want to do the one and it will be absolutely fine Okay, we're almost at the end of this now, and we're just going to use Sol Yellow from Scale 75. Now, you could just paint this on the corners as little dots, or you could do a very thin line. You want to make sure that the paint is thin on this part. You don't want to put it on quite thick and chunky, otherwise it will look nasty. So I'm doing this quite sparingly. I'm focusing this on the top parts of all of the robe areas, and just adding little dots here and there. And you can see it is quite rough. You could probably blend this into the orange much nicer than this, but to speed up the process, I'm just putting it on um, very willy-nilly. It's uh, it's not a perfect process. And like I was saying, this is just to increase the, the highlight. The contrast is much higher than it was before. So you can skip this step if you prefer a more blended look, or you can add this in if you want it to really pop when it's on the battlefield. Now the next step will definitely help with this contrast we're going to use the red blood letter glaze from games workshop and this is quite a thin glaze we're going to apply this over the entire robe and do it all in one coat very similar to a wash except for this is a bit thinner than a wash so you um, apply this very thin layer over everything and you can see the red on it it's um, a lot more vibrant than it was and you can do this multiple times so if you're not happy with the first time it's fully dried and you think oh that could be a little bit red a little bit more red then just do a second coat but make sure to let the first one completely dry before you go on to the second one otherwise you'll disturb the surface and you'll get some nasty watermarks and you'll get some lines and things that you don't really like unless you paint painting Nurgle that doesn't really doesn't really look good on a model The other option is, as well, instead of using blood letter from Games Workshop, you can create your own glazes. So if you get any normal paint, a red of some sort, you can thin it down with water or you can use medium and thin it down to a very uh, thin consistency and apply it over the top of this exactly in the same way as we're doing right now. And that way you can play around with different shades of glazes. You're not limited to what's available from the shops. You can create your own. So there will be videos on YouTube or everywhere you know there's plenty of places on the internet explaining how to create your own glazers so I definitely recommend looking into that one day I may do one for Wargamer Online but for now we're just going to use blood letter because it's easy and you can see how nice this looks there's a little bit of a darker exposure there so you can see it a little bit better so that's the red robes done or the crimson robes completely finished next we're going to go on to the uh, browns the leathers so the majority of this model has been painted so it's mostly the details which are left to go through so to begin with we're using doomball brown from games workshop and we're going to paint the sash or the the other little bit of robes that are on this miniature we're also going to be using rhinox hide later on for the other leathery parts like the belt and the uh, holster for his pistol but we're going to go around this entire model at the moment and paint this in doomball brown i'm also going to be adding this color to the holster for now just as a 
a base coat. Uh, I know Doombull is a layer and Rhinox Hide is a base colour, but I did it beforehand anyway, so you could probably skip that step on the holster and the belt if you wanted to. This just made it easier when I was painting all of the other areas. It, it did a nice base coat before I started, so uh, skip it if you want or just do what I did. Now this is the same as the red, you want to build this up in two or three very thin layers. Again, it's going to be patience over anything else, but you're going to get a better result by doing it this way. And once Doombull is dry, we're going to go straight onto Rhinox Hide. So this is the gloves, the belt, and the holster. I think that's pretty much everything. And the reason we're doing these browns together is because we can we can do them at the same time. Not only does the belt go over things like the sash, but we can use similar washers. So we can use an Agrax Earthshade wash, and we can do both of the shades at the same time. So we're going to build this base colour up first before we go onto the wash, and then we're going to highlight them individually afterwards. Just um, be careful when it comes to painting around any areas which you've done on the red because you don't really want to go back and repeat any of the process afterwards. But at the minute where I'm painting around his little staff or his, uh, what's it called, a stave that he's holding right now, you can get it onto there without worrying because we're going to go over that later on. Switch to a smaller brush as well if you find it a bit difficult using a bigger one. I generally use a medium brush, an old medium brush from Games Workshop, at probably a size 2 in any other brush range. But you can always go down to a 1 or a 0 if you're finding that that one is too big of a brush. Now once that's fully dry we're going to add a wash to all of these brown areas and we're using Agrax Earthshade like I said before. It's probably one of the greatest washers or shades you can actually get from anywhere. And I think between Agrax Earthshade and Norn Oil you've pretty much covered everything you're going to need in terms of washing unless you want to do specific colours. With this we're just going to go over all of the brown. The main thing as always with a wash or a shade is to go into the recesses. So you want to make sure that it goes in and dries properly. You don't want to disturb the surface so do it all in one go. Now we're going to highlight up the sash. We're using Tuscore Fur for this. And we're going to do this more of a edge highlight rather than a layer. So we're just going to go around the edges of the sash. We're going to look at where there is any sort of texture or lines and we're going to go in and paint another line around that as well just to give it more definition definition and make it stand out a little bit more. There isn't a huge amount to do on this so just take your time and go around and be as neat and uh, gentle with the brush as possible. You really don't need to press too hard when you're using the brush here. Once that one's done and you've fully highlighted the first colour we're going to use Ishtar Pink and we're going to do exactly, exactly the same thing but leave a bit of the previous colour from the tusk or behind but you want to paint in the same sort of lines the same brush strokes as you were doing before and just make this a little bit brighter in areas generally towards the top because that's where the light would be hitting the miniature you can see that's brightening it back up what you can do as well if you find that these transitions are too bright is you can go back in with a wash later on and you can blend them together again so you could use a thin down version of Agrax Earthshade just mix it in with some medium and that will get rid of the the very harsh contrast. We're going to do the same with the rest of the leather areas now. We're using Sharpnel Red. I don't know if that was supposed to be spelt Shrapnel Red by Scale 75, but Sharpnel Red is definitely what it's being called from now on. And we're going to go around the edges of all of these pouches. We've also got the holster to go around and the gloves that this little dude is wearing. It is quite a difference in colour between uh, the Rhinox hide and this. But again, I quite like the, the, the contrast between the two colours. And you can see I'm painting some texture onto his gloves. We're still leaving some of the Rhinox hide from the base colour that we've done on this. And then once this is fully dried, we're going to go on to the next highlight. But this is uh, the perfect opportunity to pick out all of his little fingers. And you can see that it really is bringing out the model a little bit more. Some of those details that you don't normally see when it's... Uh, painted in a base colour, they definitely stand out when you start putting these highlights on. Okay, so the next highlight for these the brown area, the, the gloves and the holster, is going to be Chink Orange. And this is another scale 75 paint. And we're mainly going to focus this on the top of all of the leathery areas and painting a very thin edge highlight around as well, making sure that we leave the previous colour, uh, that previous highlight colour exactly where it was. And again, just paint as thin line as possible. I find it's easy to do this sort of uh, highlighting when you brace your hands. So I have to have 
my chair really low down. I've ha I've got a custom built desk that Phil built for me in this in the little office that I use to paint everything. So um, that desk is higher than most desks should ever be. But that's because I sit really low and I have to have my hands braced on the table whenever I'm painting anything, which is a little bit weird. But it's the way that I've become accustomed to painting, and I can't do it any other way. I uh, have two shaky hands if I'm not braced against the table constantly. Okay, so you can see a different colour starting to appear now we're doing this highlight. It does look really nice and you can adjust the colour tone as well just by mixing in different colours. I'm going to go really neat around this belt as well. And then once that colour has been fully done, the final step is just to add a very small dot of a highlight. We're going to use a colour called High Key Yellow from scale 75 and we're going to paint little dots all around these leather areas just so from the battlefield that they, they definitely stand out. You can see that there's the edge of a leather uh, belt or a glove or whatever it is that you're painting. So you can see just a very small dot. Normally this sort of, I've found that this works better on armour so not necessarily for cloth or you know, any sort of clothing or garments but armor is generally where these little dots work best but i've tried it out on this and it doesn't look too bad it definitely just put, pick out the points on the model okay so the next step which is going to be really straightforward is we're using a bad and black and we're going to paint the boots and we're not going to do anything else to these you can do a gray highlight or a grayish blue highlight or you can wash them afterwards i'm as simple as it is i'm just doing a bad and black and then leaving it so you might need to do two coats of this because, again, you don't want it to be a thick coat and you want to make sure that you cover that base coat that we've applied, the primer. But other than that, the boots are done. It's just a black colour. Next, we're going to move on to the skin and we're going to start with golden skin from scale 75. And you just want to apply this over the entire head. This guy looks like he's quite unfortunate. He's been drafted by the Imperium. He's been hooked up with some sort of... Uh, telekinetic device on his head it looks like he's got a headache I don't know whether that was because of the process of having this attached to him or whether he's got to endure listening to all the rest of the Imperial agents or if he's just having a really bad day I don't know but he's definitely not looking like he's in a good condition so build this one up two to three layers and just go in between the fingers on this glove here just be careful not to get it onto the red or the browns or any other area that we've painted already so once that is fully dried, we're going to use Brain Eater Azure because I want him to look quite sickly. And this has been thinned down with water, probably 70% water and only 30% paint. It's almost a glaze, a very thin glaze. And I'm just pulling this into areas underneath his eyes, around his nose, any sort of creases on the bottom of his head. And I wanted this to add a little bit of a a nasty pale look almost like he's turning into some sort of ghoul or he's not slept for a couple of weeks and he looks pretty grim we're going to tidy this up again using the previous skin color so you can see it's uh, while it's still wet just get some of the golden skin and just almost blend it into that brain eater azure color i love the names from scale 75 so inventive and there you can see there's a little bit of a sickly shadow okay we're just going to tidy up some of the areas where that it might have gone that we didn't want it to go. So on the cheeks and around the, uh, the lip areas. And then we're going to add another wash. So this is going to be Drakenhof Nightshade. And we're going to apply this into the eyelids and around the mouth area. Not completely. This is again just to make it look sickly and, and nasty. It's quite difficult to get it into his left eye just because of the position of the model and this is such a tiny miniature his eyes were tiny so I had to do that off camera and even that was challenging and then once that's dry we're going to go on to the next highlight of the skin which is pale skin and we're going to add wrinkles we're going to add some texture same as we've done with the rest of this model and this is on the top of the tip of the nose the bridge of the nose top of the eyebrows and top of the lip you know any sort of area where the light would hit and it would be a lighter skin tone we're going to go around with very thin paint and just add this in. And in some areas it's almost like an edge highlight. We're next going to go on to some his teeth. He's only got two little teeth at the front and we're going to use Zandri Dust for this. 
and that's as simple as it is, just literally painting two little teeth. You could do them brighter, you could do them black, you could do them green, all sorts of colours. And we're going to highlight them using pale skin, just because it's to hand. We could have used a shabty bone or a screaming skull, but it's such a small area, and it's just a highlight that we need that that colour will work perfectly. Okay, that is the skin done for now. We're going to add some details later, but we're going to go straight on to his staff, which is the gold. So we're using Retributor Armor for this, and we're going to go over the entire golden staff using this. There are some other details that we're going to pick out as well. He's got his little skull on his belt buckle, and there's also a little symbol on his uh, robe. He's got the Inquisition symbol on his top left of his robe, so we're going to paint that with the gold as well. Again, same as before, just try and be neat with this. If you need to, drop down to a smaller brush just so that you don't get it onto the red of the robe or on the belt because going back and doing the old process is going to be more work than it is just to be a little bit neater and painting these details in. There's also an insignia or an eagle on his holster. We're going to get that as well at the same time. And there's also little buttons. So on his gloves, I'm not sure if it even shows on this, but on his gloves you can see three little dots. So they're going to be painted with gold as well. And he's got little buttons on his on his chest, so we're going to do that as well. Once that's fully dried, we're going to go on to the next metallic, which is lead belcher. And there's not many areas to paint with this. So we've got the actual gun itself, the butt of the gun. Or the handle of the gun. <laughs> so we'll do that. And then there's a little mechanical thing on his robes again up on his right hand side so we're going to paint that bit and that's pretty much it for silver there's his head where his little bionic thing has been implanted onto his skull so we're going to go around that with the silver but other than that there's pretty much no other areas of metallic on this on this dude this poor unfortunate servant of the imperium it's got to be one of the worst things to be Actually, I say that, there's probably a lot worse. If you think of anything worse, let us know what's worse than being a Psyker in the Imperium. Next base colour, before we start highlighting stuff up, we're going to go on to the Purity Seals. Now, these can be done in different ways. I generally either do a Xandri Dust base or I'll do a Rakarth Flesh, depending on whether I want it to be a sandy colour or I want it to be a very more of a white. But to contrast the rest of this, to give it another colour, we're going to use Xandri Dust here. We're going to now shade all of the gold as well as the purity seal using seraphim sepia and same as we've done with all the washers make sure it goes into all of the recesses we want to make sure it goes into all the recesses on the first pass so make sure it does that and other than that wait for it to dry like i said 30 minutes plus until it's fully dried we're going to do the same with the silver apart from we're going to be using null oil now if you've limited on washers or you want to try and keep it simple, rather than using Seraphim you can quite easily use Agrax Earthshade because we used that earlier on on this model. So if you want to just stick to the two washers you can easily do that. Next we're going to add a little bit of tenderness to his head where this implanted device thing is. So we're using the previous glaze blood letter and we're just very neatly going to go around the edge of where his skin meets this device and just paint this red in. And it just looks it looks nice and sore afterwards, like it's definitely giving him a headache. And we're also going to paint some little um, veins on the top of his head. So just squiggly lines using the blood letter. It's quite thin, so just be as neat as you can and just do little squiggly lines coming out from the back of his head forwards. And you could do different colours of this. You could use purple and blues to, to mix it up. I'm just sticking with the blood letter because I'm trying to make this as fast as possible. And we're just going to add a little bit of blood letter into his eye socket and a little bit coming down from his nose, possibly because it's been bleeding in the past or just because he's red and raw. Next, we're going to highlight the Purity Seal using a Shabti Bone. And if you wanted to have more of a blend, you would probably start with the Xandri Dust first um, rather than going straight over Xandri after it's been washed with a Shabti because... Obviously you can see the difference between the two colours, but again, to speed up the process, it's going straight to a Shabti. Then we're going to go on to Screaming Skull, and that's as far as we're going to actually do with the Purity Seal itself. But same as I do with everything, painting in the direction that this Purity Seal is going. So this is just sideways on, in the same way that the script is going to be. 
do both sides of this and then we can go on to doing the actual script and for this I always use black ink it's an old paint from Games Workshop you can pick it up on eBay if you can't find this you can either use black watered down or you can buy a uh, calligraphy ink. I think that the company that I get mine from is called Liquitex and you can pick it up on Amazon or eBay for around £5 for a pot and it will last you literally years. So if you can't find this black ink on eBay the next best thing would be Liquitex black and just use the smallest brush you can and do nice little squiggles along the purity seal. And this takes a little bit of practice, but they definitely look nice. Well, one thing to note is don't use a wash over the top of the black inks because they do start to, to, to mix. They blend all over the model, so don't use anything else over the top of an ink. For the wax itself, we're going to use a bit of a weird colour here. We're using Sunset Purple from Scale 75. We're just blocking in the main colour. And we're going to highlight this with Fuchsia. Very alternative looking colors because there's a lot of purples used and blues and reds on the washers i wanted a different color other than a red purity seal so we've tried purple we're seeing how it looks it's definitely something different normally it's either a red or a green that most people paint purity seals in so a purplish pink is definitely something to to try we're going to use juicy violet to wash this as well and make sure you go around the outside of the wax itself Next, we're highlighting the gold, we're using Liberator Gold. This is almost like mixing silver into a gold, so it's quite a nice highlight for the Retributor Gold that we started with. And the Custodians that I painted for Rachel, they've all got pretty much Liberator as their dominant colour. It's quite a, like I say, an off gold. We're going to highlight this up again with a silver, but we're going to use Stormhost Silver for this and that's because we can use it on the gold to highlight it as well as on the silvers that we've done already so again it saves you money buying as many paint pots you can stick to a very limited set of pots and you can still paint a lot of models with them but this is an edge highlight we're going over the top of all of that we're also picking out the icons in exactly the same way so mainly the top of the icon the top of the skull just because that's where the sun will hit first or the light will hit And then the same on the silver areas, just picking out the top. Then you've just got to be really careful around his little device on his head. I need to know what that is called. But just around the edge, we're going to do a highlight. And we're going to pick out the little cables that go over his head as well. Just a very quick edge highlight over the top of there. And then we're on to shading all of this. So we're using Duty Violet again on the gold. Now this tints the gold, rather than using a brown or a black and making it really dark and grungy, we're using purple, which gives it a different colour, it gives it a different hue, and we've used the purple as a wash on the red, we've used it on the face, it ties the model together, there's a lot of purple on this model, even though it's not blatantly obvious, you can see it in all of the little shadows. We're going to paint the little eye, basically it's a gem on his staff using Thousand Suns Blue, and there's two gems on this. And then we're going to highlight that using Aramon Blue. And this is almost painted like a crescent. So you're just painting the left and the bottom part of the gem. And you're doing just a very nice little curve along the bottom left. Again, do that on both sides. And then we're going to finally highlight that with Baharoth Blue, which is an edge paint from Games Workshop. And do a very thin line again, just outlining this gem. And then after that, all we're going to do is add a dot of white into the top right of this gem and it is done. And that's the whole model finished. One thing I haven't added on here is you could use a gloss varnish on the gem once it's fully been um, varnished and mat matted afterwards just to make the gem stand out. So that's something I do apply. Other than that, he's ready to go. Stick him on a base, put him on the battlefield and let him explode. Um, hopefully this video has been good. Hopefully you've taken some tips from it and even if you're not going to paint this miniature you can use it on something that you've got in your own collection and add a little picture at the end here i know it's not the greatest and i definitely need to sort out the spinning rotating videos of final models but this is what i can do for the moment so um yeah it was a nice model to paint i've got the other two just to finish i've got a couple of details and then it's onto some assassins for rachel's custodian army and it's looking really nice there's a lot of golds there's a lot of reds and there's a lot of browns but they all look very nice together so thank you very much for for watching this video thank you very much for being part of the premium subscription base on this website because that is 
or what helps me continue to do what I'm doing. So I appreciate every single one of you that is helping continue this process basically help me continue to make videos let me know if there's any specific miniatures you want me to paint if there is any details or any colors that you want me to go over because i can add it to the list of stuff that i've got planned there is a huge host of age of sigmar models warhammer 40,000, obviously bolt action we're about to start that so i can do tutorials on things like that once i've figured out the process myself so if there's anything in particular from those ranges or anything different just let me know in the comments below and i can always add it to the list and go through it so thank you very much for watching this one and i'll see you on the next one